That says Guadalajara, in case you missed it, going by too quick. I reroute. I rewound a lot. <laughs> I wanted to be informational. I got no idea what kind of car this is, so though. You've got some kind of disguise lined it's up, called right? the Batman. Yep. All set. Hope so. You'd be a little conspicuous just walking the street. Can you disguise your voice a bit? Thanks, Kev. I'll blend right in. I don't have a single self-aware bone in my body. Well, just get into the sewer system ASAP. My ad won't fit. You, just mind their own business. Sure I'm in Guadalajara. They have hat holes, right? For, for people who need to go down yeah, holes with hats. Make some adjustments along with the K9000 sounds like this game from a weird, semi-gritty Doctor Who reboot. <laughs> so yeah, I say let's throw him a bow. God, play. My exoskeleton <laughs> resembles a K9. Canines enjoy bones. I didn't even notice. That was an accident. Whoops. I love that really slight pause where he just like looks around for a second, like where he it just seems like he's thinking, what, what's up with this fucking robot dog? What's this what's his problem? <laughs> God, what a dick. Just imagine how much time Doctor had to spend on the world's worst jigsaw puzzle putting <laughs> that guy back together. Cyborg is his little kid. Where's my hat? That's a disguise, all right. Oh, goodness. Also, the the steering wheel where the horn is, is it's just the platinum Adios, logo upside down. Oh, I thought the B stood for Batman. Uh, you mean you weren't serious? No. I have seen people argue that this game is too serious and does and uh, it's mm. right. People say system. that about a lot of games. All right, let's get started. Your Do they expect slide whistles? I, I don't know. Research center somewhere in that area. According to the intel from our client, the lab's been dumping illegal waste into those sewers. It's FYI, shit's taken without a license actually. With the cartels and human so I really love that Unless Blade Wolf anyway. is actually uh, covered in more knives that. now. Like, if you look at the Tell back of his legs, it. he has yeah. like we a dozen knives. Also, he has knives in the back of his feet. Can. Of course, you'll have to find it first. We still don't know the exact location. So I'm looking for anywhere the lab might hook up with the sewers. Yep. If they're actually dumping waste, they've got to link up somehow. Find that. No, they're dumping waste into, into the trucks, the which then take it to the sewers. Mm. It's flawless. No Stealth's my specialty. <laughs> right. Well, we'll see. We Kevin just watched you tip your hats at bystanders <laughs> after telling you to lay low. <laughs> Maybe something related to all the people they're trafficking. Like experimentation? It's possible. First things first, though. Find a way into that lab. Oh, right. It says here the locals say black crocodiles live in those sewers. So, you know, uh, watch out. That's just the really big Black shits. Crocodiles. No. Ow. Uh. Could they be talking about UGs? I'm turning hey, my smell receptors legend. off. But still, be careful. I will scout ahead. You will provide backup. Hell yeah, dog's in charge. Yes, sir. Commence operation. So one of my favorite things about Rising is the straight man of the game is a robot dog. UGs are patrolling the sewers. <laughs> Exercise caution. And also, uh, when Blade Wolf was remade, his body's made to match Raiden's, including his, like, dog ears come together over his face, just like Raiden's visor. <laughs> That's so cute. Anyhow, we've got one of these! You got the pole arm. When you have unique weapons equipped, your light attack will always still be your sword, but you lose your sword's strong attacks in favor for the new weapon. And all the inputs for the combos are the same as the ones for the sword, so you don't need to remember too many button inputs. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And the nice thing about the pole arm is that all the finishing moves for all of his combos can be extended by tapping the button a bunch. Oh, that's good. Oh, I was expecting Killer Croc in this Batman oh. game. Dang it. He's chapter three. Take ah. 
This is great. I love this guy. So this is one of the enemy types that was actually planned for the original Metal Gear Rising. It was carried over into the new one. Um, uh -huh. It's a Mastiff. It's not a cyborg. It's just a UG. Um, it's a gorilla. It's a gorilla. That's what it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a robot gorilla. Um, on higher difficulties, these guys are fucking nightmares. Um, uh, I can imagine. Because they are one of the most aggressive enemy types, especially in higher difficulties. And also, they have more than one type of grab. They actually have two. They have this long range one, too. And, like. Oh, that's handy. With both grabs, you can wiggle the stick to get out of them, but even them just knocking you over to start the grab causes you to take a little bit of damage. So let's do this properly. Yeah. So the pull arm rules, you can play the whole game with it if you wanted because it's just that good. Uh, <laughs> you can see it racks up hits really fast. Um, it also has a really huge range so you can get lots of people locked into attacks. And also later enemies like cyborgs can get stun locked by it very easily. Also check nice. out this execution move. <laughs> uh, just like when you can grab the gecko and swing it around by that wire, uh, this execution move, if enemies are near you swinging the Mastiff around, they will also get hurt. Well, yeah, it only makes sense. And on higher difficulties, swinging the Mastiff around does more damage, so you can actually just outright kill some enemies just by swinging him around. So I saw that uh, you, you made one of the arms go blue. Can you just like chop off the arm right there and it tries to fight on? Yeah. It's like a different moveset. Yeah, what That's actually great. happens is, um, so you know, they use both their arms to grab you, but even if you cut one arm off, they'll just use a different grab. Um, uh -huh. if you take both arms off, all they can do is drop kick you or headbutt you. <laughs> um,. And the nice thing is, is that their drop kick is also their slowest attack, which makes it really easy to parry counter. Right. There's the riding I know. But yeah, if you cut off just one of their arms, they get some different punches that are a little bit slower. But overall, I really like fighting Mastiffs because they're just pretty cool. I wish they danced. Can they dance a little more? There isn't a lot of dancing. There's, they, when you fight them in groups, they hop a lot. We'll see. This game isn't nearly silly enough. There oh, you go. Jeez. It's not about sombreros. It's about gorilla dance. Yeah. Oh, it seems the lab somehow dumps things up. Weird. Also, like that gecko there that's running away. Um, dwarf geckos can carry guns. You don't see him do it that often, but like that one there is just holding some sort of submachine gun. Silly Blade Wolf, that's not a boy, that's Dwarf Gecko! <laughs> I don't know much about humans. <laughs> what does human child look like? He thought it was just an amputee. Right, and how is a baby formed? <laughs> how Rose get pregnant. <laughs> I'm honestly confused. I don't think Raiden has what it takes. <laughs> so after you beat up all those dwarf gecko, um, if you take a look at the radar in the top right, there's suddenly a single red dot. <gasps> that red dot doesn't appear until you take those dwarf gecko out. Well, we better go do this optional fight so we can get all of the S ranks. Yes. Well, it's actually not an optional fight. It's a secret joke enemy. You see them very rarely, but they're actually two enemies in one. You've been making every enemy a joke. Oh. Uh, but uh, they are actually dwarf geckos stacked up on each other, like when they were in that coat in MGS4. <laughs> and they know Kung Fu! Yep. Um, they just have really super fast kicks and punches that are really hard to parry. They're really easy to kill otherwise, though. I mean, you can just chop them in half. Uh, there are five of these guys in the game. You don't get anything for finding at all of them except for getting a trophy. Um, the nice thing about them, though, is if you make them blow up right, they drop lots of money. Nice. 5,000 each if you can get both of them to drop it. And one other thing. Uh, if... You just got normal dwarf gecko. 
and you chop off the top arm, they get really mad. Oh. And then they try to blow up. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> and this time, both of them drop the 5,000. Hooray. This chapter is actually a really good chapter for getting lots of money if you don't want to farm by using checkpoints to respawn money chests or something. Mm-hmm. Because you can speed run this chapter really fast, and you can also get a lot of money easily, especially like with the hidden dwarf gecko man. Gecko man is probably my least favorite superhero. No. Come on, Blade Wolf, don't be useless. <laughs> you are covered in blades. I scouted ahead too fast, I guess. It's usually not the job of backup to do everything. <laughs> oh, snap! What, are you doing charades? <laughs> Chapter 2 introduces a lot of new enemies. Oh, you know, just the Ninja Turtles and also Vanilla Ice reference in our Metal Gear game. <laughs> I'm waving my little arms just like these things. <laughs> so these are raptors? Yes. Um, the little wiggly arms are actually Dwarf Gecko. They actually sit in a little hole and they pilot these things. <laughs> so the raptors pretty much always fight in groups. Uh, they have giant swords in the back of their legs. They send out these purple balls. They have uh -huh. several. They're also really good at dizzying you if they actually hit you with something, and also make the camera freak the hell out. But like those purple balls that shot out, and also this one are like little EMP bursts, and if you get hit by one, uh, it, it like immediately stuns you. So it looks like these are built from a dwarf gecko and spare parts from big gecko and uh, light wolf. Pretty much, yeah. Like, even if you call Doctor about these things, it's like, yeah, these are kind of like Gecko, but they need, like, medium-sized. So they made these. Also, when you do the execution, pull the little Dwarf Gecko out. If you don't actually cut him up, he'll just be a normal enemy you have to fight afterwards. Whoopsie. Yep. Also, they're red here. If a raptor sees you kill another raptor right in front of his face, they get really angry and, like, all their stats get boosted for a little bit. Oh, snap. They do more damage and they'll take less damage and all that. So an actually better way to deal with raptors... So you somehow have to trick them into thinking the third guy just got bored and went <laughs> home. An actual good way of keeping them from getting angry is to actually just cut their legs off so they can't really do anything and then just finish them off later, because then they can't get angry. It looks so sad. I know. Poor little fella. And just like a lot of the heavier enemies in this game, they can't be launched normally, but once their legs are weakened, you can. Right. Uh, there's only two enemies in the game that can't actually be launched. One of them is the Gecko, and another one we haven't seen yet. Actually, but we will three. right around the corner. I mean, there's so many enemies in this chapter. Yeah. There's actually a third one that we'll see in, like, next video. I don't think you can launch a helicopter. But no. They've already got that under control. Estás <laughs> bien? What do you say? Me a Guyanese from Guyana. So I can't see this kid at any point in the game with also not thinking about airplane and that joke where the black guys have subtitles. <laughs> yeah, that's great because so does Angela Lansbury. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Me? Oh, just chilling out, getting my IV infected, the usual. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm looking for bad guys. Ah, damn Skunter Research Lab. You know about it? Me know me now go back. Hey, you're not one of them skunt, nah? Skunt means uh, assholes. Right. <laughs> and the game does play with George's double subtitles by sometimes putting jokes in there. Sort of. What Great. You? 
Is George gonna be a cyborg soon? I don't know. If he is, I'm sure he'll be covered in knives. Yeah. Doctor just shrugs and he goes, "Look, all I have is this bin of knives. I'll just glue knives to him." Look, he lost his eyeballs, so they're knives now. Like you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> rational. But then me bin over here. What them scunt wanna do? Snuff us out and gut all day again. I think. Snuff us out it is pretty universal. You don't need. Shame not a bad ass robot ninja man, same as you. Me been strongest cyborg ever. Warlock all them phantoms and black clothes that I pass me. Starting to sound like a bad guy yourself. I guess I'll murder you. Done plenty Hey kid, pet my dog. No, never. Don't pet that part. It's sharp. We tried to warn the boy. I say. I would his brain would get cut out. Run your ass out of there. But them boy with me no understand. They like Spanish or something. So me the only something. Oh, no. I don't know. And that machine come after me and and I know the rest. George, I need every detail about how you escaped. I'll shake George, it out of you. Don't let me terrify you. <laughs> So the kid got into the sewers through a drainage channel? Yeah, he says. Yeah, probably like Wii TV or TLC or something. Oh, jeez. Got it. That must be where they dump the waste. There's something else. It sounds like a. Yeah, have you watched Four Weddings? Jesus. <laughs> if a Sentry Cyborg was on hand for the meeting. You should be able to review their video log, provided you can find the server access terminal. That would give us the evidence we need. As well as a little peek at the level of that technology. So what about Doctor? Should just like clap. I made sure really the excited area was secure <laughs> and told him to sit tight. Can you pick him up? Sure, I'll send a couple agents for him. You just focus on getting into that lab. If send those Gemini guys. They the are useless. Mm -hmm. We need to hurry. Agreed. Riding out. So if we go back to where George is hiding. He's just gone. He's an invisible child. Well, that has tactical advantages. Yeah. But now that we've got Blade Wolf as a buddy, he can also chat up Wolf. Yeah! And see what he's doing. Hey, Wolf! Let me ask you something. What do you think you're doing here? What an asshole! Why are you working with me? Because I choose to. I owe a debt, and I wish to repay it. A debt, huh? How human of you. Don't taunt him. It's hard, it's always hard to read the codec information, but if you look at Blade Wolf's age, he's three. <laughs> is, that, is that in dog ears or uh... Robot dog ears. I mean, you're willing to follow me. Really weird conversion rate. Just because of that? Yeah, it involves like square roots and shit. Mm -hmm. A delicate question. I do find it difficult to rationalize your mission to rescue the children. If you wish to save children in need, there are hundreds of millions of others equally yeah, in need. Yeah, right, and just donate to the Red <laughs> Cross or something. <laughs> However, Gosh, I'm not part of the problem. the full extent of Desperado's activities. And as such, it is meaningless to debate best practices without sufficient information. <laughs> All right, then. No more questions, Your Honor. Bark. And also, we picked up a crap load of VR missions, so let's look at a couple. Okay. This is basically just go over uh, all the different mission whoa, types. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. So there are 50 VR missions and the five on top are just tutorials. Um, 30 of them are DLC. They're, that's like three bucks now. Um, they're unlocked from the start. The first 20 are the ones you have to unlock. Check your fuel cells! Check your status! <laughs> Let's go! So this one sounds really simple, which is just eliminate all enemies. But you get ranked in VR missions, not in the same way as you do in normal fights. You you just get ranked on how fast you beat them. Uh-huh. First place for killing eight cyborgs and a dwarf gecko is 40 seconds. It is really hard to get first nice. place in this one. You can't do any Zadatsus because it takes too much time. 
So you just gotta chop like their head off and just run away immediately. Like, I do that really fast, and I still hit, like, 38 seconds. Well, that's fast enough. Don't worry about it. No no one's judging you here. Uh, this is a safe place. Huh. It's Something okay. Yellow. It's okay. But you also get an extra bit of money anytime you beat your record. But first place is 10,000 bucks. Nice. And enough of the VR missions are easy enough to get first place on that you might as well just do them to get some extra money. Eliminate all enemies. Fight ninja kill. Hmm. And again, to save time, you don't want to Zandatsu anybody. You just want to poke him and run. And also because you have to do it via ninja kill, you can't get caught. Yeah, because that's not conspicuous. No. I mean, look. It's all yellow a little bit. Are they repainting? <laughs> ah! A pretty Damn. easy one. When you first start up a VR mission, it has like the mission description and it has like a diamond next to it and the amount of diamonds like right there. The amount of diamonds is the, the difficulty. difficulty. Yeah. yeah, it's one to five. Um, some of them later on are fucking almost impossible to get first place on. It is the worst. <laughs> I like when I was first trying to get first place on them, I recorded them in advance so I would never have to do it again. Yep. It is like Jasper Bat Jr. amounts of frustration at points. So this is just a foot race to the end. Yeah. This one is the easiest VR mission. Like, look. I'm done. Just First place. don't stab people. The yeah. end. Later ones are a lot harder, because then you'll get, like, dudes on high places you can't reach with rocket launchers. Mm -hmm. And they'll try to... And they can knock you off the blocks, and then you respawn... Several I really back. dig the visuals. I, I like the the scan lines, the sort yeah. of yeah. The VR missions uh, look cool. Everything's sort of somewhat um, was it cell shady looking? Yeah. They also put like a weird filter on. You can't see it much in this one, but they also have like a different set of shadows that they make like more blocky looking. Right. Yeah. They put like a noise filter on it. I was noticing that when you were uh, going under the platforms in that last one. Yeah. Also, these heavy cyborgs are chumps when you use the polearm on them, because they just get stun-locked. I think a lot of things are chumps when you use the polearm on <laughs> And one thing... I know I'd be a chump if you used the polearm on me. Yeah. Anytime you're fighting geckos in a VR mission, you always want to just run far away from them to bait them into dashing at you, because it's like the easiest way to take care of them. Yep. Yep. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. There's also unlockables tied to VR missions. Um, mm -hmm. There are some you get just for beating... Wait, only 5,000? What the fuck? Oh, that was actually... Uh, I got second place on it my first go, and that gets you... Uh, 5,000 as well. Okay, so there's there's a set amount of... You can't just do it first place over and over and over. Right. Because, like, third place is 1,000, second is 4,000, first is 5,000. If you get first... Yeah, get that clapping bastard. What's he so <laughs> happy about? If you get first place first time, you get the money for the other places as well. Um, I don't get first place on video on this one because I have no patience for timing grenades in this... It is almost as bad as some of the gray missions in MGS2. Like this guy. God damn it. God damn it. I'll get him. But there's an Easter egg later on in this mission, so. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Oh, it's not the end? Nope. There are like. Oh, this one looks terrible. There are like three waves. Oh. This one is. Like, it's not too hard to complete. It's just getting first place is fairly difficult. Um... Uh, what are you so happy about? Yes! I'm alive! There we go. So this is, I think... Unless I miss it, well... We've seen all the mission types for the first 20 missions. Some of the right. DLC missions have their own new uh, mission types. 
Um, one of them is actually pretty neat, but you won't be able to see that for a while. Oh dear. Yep. Oh yeah, there, that one was alright. Yeah. Most of the time you just want to get the guy in the center pillar, but sometimes if you just hit him a little oh, off... what the hell is this nonsense? Yeah. So when you want... If you want to get these guys, like, right away, you just have to throw, like, four grenades at the same spot, and they will just all blow up. This is just playtime. <laughs> but if you don't attack these guys and let them just run around for a little bit, uh, they make the letter P. For platinum. Yep. But anyways, enough of those dwarf geckos. Agreed! I am done throwing grenades. But yeah, just doing five missions can get you, like, 50,000 bucks. Which is a lot of upgrades. Mm -hmm. Although they do limit some of the upgrades by chapters, so you can't get overpowered immediately. I can't believe what they're doing in there. Guess I shouldn't be so surprised, huh? Guess not. Are you gonna help them? No other choice. No! I'll try to help look for some place that might take them in. Kid George was weird, I don't want any more like him. <laughs> He had two sets of subtitles, and I can't read that fast. Okay, save complete. Don't let your guard down, okay? But one more time with Courtney. Say, Ryden, where'd you get that hat you were wearing? Party City. <laughs> Picked it up at a souvenir store here. I guess I just kind of like the design. Also, when you're on a scout mission, it's vital that you use the local attire. I love that he's the still in sombrero. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that he's still I all about being a scout, you. even though he's so he shitty at like it some now. Kind of mariachi singer. <laughs> oh, you think so? Yep. Only that's kind of a problem too. How so? Well, I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> Those two men were very impressed that I was hiding mariachi. from very well. One of well. them even had a hat, Mexican but mine was bigger, so I was superior. Like Come on. The guy at the shop told me I'd look just like a local. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a local tourist, maybe. Look. So he, Ryan already ruined his disguise by going out in public routine, to buy a disguise. <laughs> but, uh, nothing like that. They'd go for something a lot more simple. Yeah, I just need hat. to blend in. I'll but take that hat. That different from cowboy hats in the Old West. Are you sure? I got my hat from a man named Turd Ferguson. He assured me it was all. The <laughs> Very authentic. Sombreros the original Western settlers brought from Mexico. Of course, cowboy hats come in all shapes and sizes, so you can't really say a specific one's the cowboy hat. Huh. Well, now I know why the locals were so eager to get a look at me. I got a little yeah. drunk with that line, too. 